Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Stephen with the PH sent me a note. Said, Steve, check out the story from Reason.com. And it involves the Institute for Justice and them helping a guy out in Florida who got in trouble because his lawn, the grass, got too tall. He had an excuse. Uh, he doesn't deny that the grass did, in fact, get too tall. The question is, what is the appropriate remedy? If there's actually an ordinance on the books that says your grass cannot be beyond a certain height or unkempt or something like that, because where he was, it was a $500 a day fine, and they wanted tons of money from him. And so with the help of the Institute for Justice, he filed a lawsuit, and sadly, the litigation actually just seemed to be never-ending. But he finally won, so Florida man's tall grass saga comes to an end. His uh, overgrown yard became a six-year struggle against overzealous code enforcement. Daryl James and Ari Bargo wrote this. The retiree can finally breathe easy. After six years, two lawsuits, and a lot of legal wrangling over a $30,000 fine for tall grass, a new settlement has brought him closure. The agreement announced just a couple days ago ends the city's pursuit. They were trying to recover $10,000 in attorney fees on top of the fines. They said that was an administrative expense after they had re reduced his original fine by 80%. The reduction was only possible because of reforms the city instituted soon after he filed his first lawsuit. So there was a law on the books that said 500 bucks a day for your unkempt lawn. He fought that. The city then rewrote the rules so that was going to help him out. But then the city attempted to tack on $25,000 for out-of-pocket legal expenses before realizing that they had miscalculated. They actually admitted it. We miscalculated. As a result of the settlement, he will not have to cough up any amount for the fees, an important consolation following setbacks in his first lawsuit. So remember, this guy went to court one time and actually lost, went up on appeal. It's crazy. So the guy had attempted to reason with code enforcers before going to court, explaining that his lawn had grown long while he was settling his late mother's estate in another state, and that the landscaper he had hired to mow his grass while he's gone had died unexpectedly. He asked for leniency, but the city refused to budge and insisted on full payment of $500 per day for two months plus interest. So they even put a lien on his home and authorized city attorneys to initiate proceedings to seize his home. In response, he filed a lawsuit along with the help from the Institute for Justice, asserting that the excessive fines and lack of due process violated his 8th and 14th Amendment rights. Now, he lost in a district court in 2021 and again in 2022 at the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, but he won in other ways. His case ignited a media frenzy and public calls for reforms, prompting the city to overhaul its code enforcement regime to prevent ruinous fines for trivial offenses. After his legal battles, he managed to get the fines reduced enough to prevent foreclosure, and then he thought he was safe. But then the city hit him with the bill for attorney fees. A retroactive attempt to penalize him for seeking his day in court left with no choice. He sued again in 2023. Now, the city could have avoided both lawsuits merely by treating the man like a neighbor instead of a cash machine. While the man acknowledged his breach of a city ordinance and expected some penalty, the aggressive tactics aimed at extracting tens of thousands of dollars and trying to take his home do appear to be quite excessive. American jurisprudence dictates that punishment must fit the crime, Municipalities must balance code enforcement with common sense and respect for property rights. So this is finally over for him. But you have to understand something. There's no problem with saying you can you know, have a rule on the books or law on the books or ordinance that says you've got to keep your yard maintained. Okay? I have no problem with that. The question is what happens when someone violates a rule? Okay? And to use a football analogy, you know, is this a five-yard penalty? Or, or, or is it an ejection from the game in 15 yards? There, there's, there's, so to suggest that someone who doesn't mow their lawn gets fined $500 a day seems a little excessive to me. You might say, but Steve, okay, let's play devil's advocate here for you. And then ask, what, what would you suggest? Well, I can tell you that I've heard of municipalities near where I live where if you don't mow your lawn, They'll mow it for you and send you a bill. But it's not going to be 500 bucks a day. So the, the, the city that I'm thinking of has a, has a crew that goes out and mow all of the city properties, the parks, the medians, 
all the you know the, the, the public spaces. They do that. And they've got to come over and mow your yard because your waist, you know, your 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 grass is waist high. Well, yeah, they'll do that. And they'll send you a bill. And interestingly enough, that's not even punitive. They're saying, look, it's it's got to get mowed. You pay, you, you know, so whatever. So here the guy's going to settle his mother's estate. And I noticed that nowhere did I see anything where he's pleading for lenience going, hey, my mother died. He just, he's like, look, I was out of state on important business. He made arrangements to have his lawn mowed while he's gone, and the guy died. Now, it might be that while he's gone, he doesn't know the guy died because the guy didn't, I don't know, have the wherewithal to call him beforehand and say, hey, I'm about to die. So the guy's out of state. He thinks he's being taken care of. He comes home, and he finds a stack of notices nailed to his front door, and his grass is this high. And he can figure out pretty quickly what's going on there. The question is, what is the appropriate remedy? Is the appropriate remedy $500 a day? No. Legal fees? You know, how about, how about we find some other less painful way to handle this? Because the goal is not to raise money, and the goal is not to whip people into, you know, compliance. The goal is to try to make it so that the yards look nice up and down the streets of the, of the neighborhood. That's the goal, okay? So this isn't the end of the world that some guy didn't mow his lawn for a couple days. So that's the important thing. But I also like the fact they point out something, that the man lost in court. And there was a huge public outcry from people who heard the story and said, wait, that's insanity. That is insanity. And because of that, the city went and changed the rules and said, you know, maybe we should dial this down a little bit due to the backlash. And... That's a fascinating thing that I learned about with the Institute for Justice. I mentioned them before. I love them, the work they do. They step in and help people like this because this guy couldn't afford to hire the attorneys to take this thing up twice and file you know, another lawsuit after the first one. So they are doing the legal side of this. And when I met them a while back and talked to them about the various cases they've worked on, they told me that they worked on that Little Pink House case. Look it up, the Little Pink House. They made a movie out of it. And that's the one where a city told a woman who owned a home, we're going to take your home and along with all your neighbors' homes, and we're gonna, we'll pay you for them. We're going to take your homes and level them so a company can put a factory there. And she went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court saying that that was an inappropriate taking. The government shouldn't be in the business of taking private property to give to a business. What's up with that? Well, the Supreme Court ruled against her. It was, it was a 5-4. It was a close vote. But the backlash after that happened caused so many people to get upset that I forgot the exact number, but dozens and dozens of states changed their laws to prevent it from ever happening in their state. So you can look at the case and go, oh, they went to the U.S. Supreme Court and lost. They lost on a 5-4 vote. But did they accomplish anything? Yes, they did. They got the laws changed in all these other states. So... You can't win them all, but sometimes you can get an alternative victory. So here, the guy lost in court. But guess what? The law got changed, and the amount of money he owed got reduced dramatically. And uh, by the way, a $25,000 attorney fee somehow appeared and then disappeared. <laughs> so it's a, it's a fascinating case. I can't imagine going through this as a six-year struggle. Litigation can take time. Nothing more time-consuming than litigation, especially stuff that goes up on appeal. So Florida Man's Tall Grass Saga comes to an end. Reason.com published that. Daryl James and R.A. Burgle wrote that. Stephen of the PH sent it to me. One man's overgrown yard becomes a six-year struggle against overzealous code enforcement. And uh, good news at the end there, along with the help from the Institute for Justice. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Be thankful for what you have. You'll end up having more.